So the majority of this video is going to be adding stretchers to the bottom of the table, table um, and aprons to the top. So I just marked out two, two slots for mortises that I'm going to cut. The mortising bit I have is 3 8 so that's usually the mortises standard I go with, which is, which is what you want for about 3 quarter inch material, which is what I'm using. And I have 2 and a quarter material I'm going to be using. I want fairly thick stretchers at the bottom. So basically I'm just going to be using the mortising machine to cut those out. Since I'm going vertical on these pieces, I'm going to have to cut um, the two mortises at the top, flip it over, cut the two at the bottom, and then just um, move the fence back gradually and, and cut that vertical. So not super long to do, but a little time consuming versus being able to go horizontally. Now there's different, different opinions about stretchers and aprons on tables. Um, I usually recommend both. I will make stuff without stretchers, but in general, I won't make tables without aprons. Um, I don't think I've ever been in a situation, but I have told people if they want tables without aprons, I will make it, but then they can't call me when, when the table fails over time. Um, they're there for a reason. Not only do they hold up the table top, but the aprons and the stretchers also keep the base stable, which is very important, especially with something like this where you're using mechanics to raise and lower it over time. I wanted this base to be as heavy as possible without being obscenely heavy but also as stable as possible so that um, it's stable when the, the linear actuators are being raised and lowered, but also stable when the table's lifted in place. Um, and if you watch the video where I worked on fixing up my personal desk table, it has a, a stretcher similar to the one I'm making on the bottom. And um, I actually really enjoy having it there. Um, I rest my feet on it, so it's also a comfort thing. So you can see I did the tops and the bottoms of these and then I will flip them, uh, I won't flip them over. I will then move back the fence and then I will um, continue making these verticals. So you could see with the, the groove I cut out on the base, it's a little bit of, um, it doesn't match up with the fence perfectly. So in the last clip I was using a, a um, screwdriver in order to shim it out just enough so I could safely cut these but at this point I was just cutting them from the top side down and like I said pretty simple stuff you can see I'm just working my way down I have it lined up with my marks and pretty simple way to make a mortise so on the top what I like to do is I'm going to cut dados to the top um, and you can see I have uh, um, a stop set up on the fence I'm going to be cutting gradual, I believe this is three quarters of an inch, a gradual dado groove in the top so the back side doesn't blow, blow out. Now I have seen people, they cut rather large dados all at once. I have done that before, but it can bog down the saw. So what I like to do is, is make this incremental, and I think I did three passes. I raised it three times in order to get the depth I wanted, which, like I said, I will eventually have plans for this. I don't remember exact measurements of all this at the time. When I'm building stuff like this, I'm really working with materials I have in the shop. So a lot of times the measurements are kind of determined by what stock I have at the time within reason. I won't compromise the structure of a piece in order to not have to buy materials. But this worked out nicely. I had enough scrap to make everything. So you can see I could cut all of these at once um, because of that stop. So I'll cut one side, flip it, cut the other side, and then do the exact same thing on the other, the other top part of the base. Can raise up the blade. That was uh, pass number two and then this is the final pass. I believe these were about they look to be about an inch and a half two inches was what I went with. I didn't want to go too deep. I didn't want to get at super close to that cut angle um, so that, that this end piece was wasn't strong but once all this is glued into, into place it will also reinforce this edge so it won't look as uh, fragile. So I have a piece of yellow pine here which is what the base is this is newer yellow pine and while I do enjoy working with this material it's just not the same color as the base I didn't want it to contrast um, severely 
So I actually happen to have some older pieces of yellow pine, which don't look as old as the base because they're not, but they will match close enough. The grain's much tighter and the hue will match. These actually were parts of shelves they had on the wall, which I was taking off because I'm um, drywalling the whole space. So, but I kept these because it is really nice lumber. So since it's older, it's, it's pretty flat stuff. So I just ripped one side clean and then for the base, I could rip these into the sizes I need. Now the one problem with this material is it has paint on both sides. Um, I didn't feel like stripping these at all. So you could see once I have them cut and ripped down to size, I will send them to the table saw and remove remove that paint. I still have the ripping blade in for this project, so that's very quick work. I'm not even removing a sixteenth of an inch. I'm literally removing a, like a 30 seconds of the outside because I want to keep as much thickness of this material as possible. The thicker it is and the wider it is, the stronger the stretcher will be. So I'm just removing that paint so I don't have to deal with it, sanding it off or stripping it off in the shop. And then once this is done, you can see that this wood, while it's not as old as the other wood, it is a pretty nice match compared to the newer yellow pine, which is on the right there. And the grain is actually quite nice, um, nice, nice tight grain, which is probably why it is still so flat. And you can see holding it up next to the base, it actually matches pretty well. This is not just important for aesthetic reasons, but especially when it comes time to put a finish on this, the yellow pine would have stuck out like a sore thrum, thump, thumb next to this, this older yellow pine. So then I have a 48 inch top for this, which I had already made at this point, but for continuity of these videos, I, I haven't shown it being made yet. And um, with that, I wanted a little bit of an overhang. So you could see I set up the legs at the, the width apart I wanted, and then accounting for the thickness of the mortise, which I don't remember what it was at this time, but um, like I said, I will eventually have plants. This is probably about two inches, which is probably what I, uh, or more like probably an inch and a half. That actually looks like an inch, so I lied twice. Um, and then I will I will cut the, the tenons on these. So for this, all I do, it's easiest to cut this on the radial arm saw. I could set a stop, pull the blade forward, set a stop that lines up with my mark. And then once I have that set up, I have the, the mark on the edge, which you saw, I could raise the blade to the top of that mark. And this is a cutoff. I will cut um, a, test, a test joint, make sure it fits before cutting it on my final pieces. So that's why I always kind of keep everything oversized because then the, the pieces I cut off is how I set up the tools in order to make those cuts. So it fits in that mortise quite nice. Um, you can see the stop set up and then I'm just going to make a series of curves on the top side, the bottom side of both pieces. And um, that's how I'm going to, to make these stretchers. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. And then the, the base of these legs, especially when these are glued in place, are going to be extremely solid. They won't be able to bow out of square at any point because you have this solid joint at the base. So then I could just test those in place. The other bonus to this is because I had to remove so much material, you'll see how I finish up the top side of the stretcher. It is going to hide that cutout for the linear actuator, which is nice because it will keep it exposed. So I could take the linear actuators out whenever I want without um, too much of a pain, but this will hide it um, while the table's in use, which is nice. So this was kind of a, a, double, a double bonus, structural and aesthetically hidden, hidden cutouts there. So once I had those in place, I can move to the top aprons, which will have the exact same function on the top as the stretchers do at the bottom. The one thing I like to do, especially because I'm building this on foam pads, is even though this is held together pretty well right now with these clamps, I wanted to make sure the tops were the same distance apart as the bottoms. So it's 43 on the bottom. I made sure it was a perfect 43 at the top. And then I put a temporary spacer in there just to hold them true. So all of my measurements would be perfect and it's going to be perfectly square from bottom to top. Um, I'm using the same material, so I'm gonna go through this much faster. I'm gonna rip it into pieces and then remove that paint on the outside just like before. Um, so once again, pretty, pretty simple stuff. 
I believe these were about an inch and a half. I could take those down into multiple pieces and then I don't think I film it but after this I do remove that that paint on the outside and then I could go through and, and cut these. These are obviously going to be longer because they're going to overhang the tabletop a little bit. I do like that look. Eventually the edges of these I will cut 45s on but I do not do that towards the way we tail end of the project. So in between you could see the, the measurements, the total measurements 47 um, and I have a two inch overhang on either side which means the table's top only overhangs these aprons by about a half of an inch on either side. I have these lined up with the slots because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a shallow um, I'm going to cut a pretty wide yet shallow dado in these and then that's how I'm going to slide those into the bigger dados on top of the 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 um, the tabletops there. That's the joint I, I prefer. It makes it so that these fit snugly in there and the, the tops I'm calling, we're going to start calling them trestles for ease of this. The tops of the trestles um, will, will stay true as well. So like you can see I'm just measuring the width I divided that so I have the same depth on either side. I'm going to go through on each of these and cut all the edges first with the stop so they're all the same. Um, at this point if you're, you're building a square table your measurements should all be about the same. If you start seeing large differences, by large I mean quarter inch or over, something's out of square and it's probably best to stop. And, and figure out what's wrong because at this point none of this is glued together. The only thing that's glued together are the carriages for the actuators. The table itself is all still unglued. I don't glue it till the end because I have to take it apart multiple times and I knew I was going to have to take it apart multiple times in order to get it to work properly. And then I could slide this over and cut the, the far side of all of these joints and then I could just slide it over and cut a series of curves and that's how I make that joint. Once again pretty easy. The radial arm saw is such a versatile tool. I don't use it as much with cross cutting now that I have a nicer um, miter saw but I use it for lap joints and stuff like that all the time and then you could see how that fits into place. So this takes a little bit longer to make than just having a slide in dado cutting out these grooves but once this is in place I think I have two clamps on the base and this whole table is held in place without any glue or any hardware which is what I like and it's it's already pretty sturdy at this point. So then at this point I'm testing the actuators for the first time. They have to be held in place in order to work so I couldn't really test them until I had this out and I have this temporarily wired up. Basically in order to make them go up is pretty simple but you have to reverse the polarity in order to make them go down. So they'll extend until they hit their limit switch. There's a limit switch at the top and the bottom but you cannot just hold the power and they'll return. You have to reverse the polarity. So I bought a special switch that does that for me. So right now I'm testing them out with some alligator clips and I'm just switching the polarity with the alligator clips at this point and then I'm bringing it back down. I wanted to make sure at this point the carriages would work in the trestles and then I could kind of move forward because eventually they're going to be connected together and I wanted to make sure they work singularly before because if they don't work on themselves but um, singularly they won't work in tandem. So then I had them wired up so they would work together. I'm going to go through the electronics a little bit more later but you need a power adapter that's rated for the voltage of your actuators which these were about three I think three amps each or something like that. Um, I could link all this stuff in the description and then the switch like I said reverses the polarity. Um, I bought the cheaper one which has some extra wires. You could see them crossed over which reverses the polarity um, and then the power to through the switch to, to the actuators. Like I said I filmed um, soldering all this stuff together when I finally got it where I wanted it so you'll see a little more in depth with the wiring but basically I just set this up quickly to see that they would both work. I wanted them to raise and lower at the same time which they do and then once I got them towards the top at this point I wanted to make sure I could get them to the height I wanted it. 
Um, I forget what the actual measurements of this were. I think it was like 45 inches. And with them raised, I wanted to rock them, which you saw, to make sure that they were sturdy, which they are. The only thing that was shaking was the table, and then make sure that they raise back down with all of the aprons and the stretchers in place. So with that in place, I can move on to making the, the second carriage, which is going to go, there's going to be essentially an inner apron that connects those, those two actuators, which will be the next video.